Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. Welcome back. It's 12 after the hour. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. Thanks for being part of my day. I'm Jim Blassingame, and you're listening to the Small Business Advocate Show. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad, I'm glad Gary Chirac is here, too, ladies and gentlemen. Gary is the president of Chirac Financial Services. It's a family-owned business specializing in financial planning and, and uh, financial products and, and assistance that he provides to small business owners just like you. He's the author of If Your Money Talk, What Secrets Would It Tell? And he's here to talk to us about something very interesting and very timely. Gary Sirak, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate being here. It's good to have you back. So we've got a lot of unemployment in America, Gary. But if you look at if you if you if you segment the 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 working class folks, the the, the folks in America who who are looking for work, I should say. And you segment out the young people, the twenty-somethings, especially the ones who are, you know, just starting their career. It's it's much higher for that group than it is for the for the average, isn't it? Oh, absolutely! It's extremely difficult for young people to find jobs today. Yeah. When and and <clears throat> is now is that really the case, Gary, or is it extremely difficult for them to find the jobs that they want? Well, yeah, your your answer is better than mine, Jim. <laughs> You're clearly correct in that. It's really the job they want or the job they dreamed about or whatever they were thinking. That job isn't readily available. I mean, in some cases it is, but mostly it's not. Well, let's think. Let's think about this pressure that's been put on them. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I graduated from college, I didn't have any debt because. I didn't know how to get a loan in those days. I don't even know if they loaned money back in those days. But, but I, you know, I gutted it out and, and, and worked my way through college, and I didn't know any money when I got out. Okay, those were simpler times. Tuition wasn't really, as relatively speaking, wasn't as expensive as it is now. But kids today are graduating with, with somebody, either them in the form of debt or their parents in the form of, of, of you know, a lot, a lot of savings, are spending tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on an education. And so they're expecting big things when they when they when they get that diploma, aren't they? Oh absolutely. They're expecting and, it, and it's not happening. No, it's not happening. And part of it is because a lot of people who should be retired by now aren't retired because of some things that have happened in our economy and therefore they're working longer and the job market in general isn't what it was, you know, fifteen, twenty years ago because jobs have gone other places. So there's a lot of a lot of problems and a lot of pressures on these young people coming out of school. There were other and, things, other things that happened too, though, uh, Gary. If you remember, back in the '90s, you know, people were hiring kids out of college and paying them ridiculous uh, uh, salaries. Uh, not, you know, back in '05 and '06, kids were graduating with with just a marketing degree or something and coming right out of college making seventy, eighty thousand dollars. I remember those days well. You know, everything's reset now. Those Maybe now is too punitive for the young kids, but clearly those other scenarios were way too too generous, weren't they? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and that, 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 that's in people in their minds, isn't it? Because when, when a lot of these kids started to college or, or were about to go to college, those things were happening. Four years later, it's not happening. Well, I think that's totally true, too. I think that we were overpaying our younger people. They weren't very talented. They were just brand new. And we got uh, extremely exuberant <laughs> with yeah, our payroll. Yeah, and, and it caused a problem, and it did. It's, uh, it, it certainly contributes to the problem we have today. They weren't worth what they were making in those days. There's no way they were worth. My, when my son was uh, was uh, like a like a, a 15 year old, 14, 15 year old, a neighbor wanted him to help him do some work in in a field. You know, just do some trash collecting and you know burning some brush and things like that. It's the first job he really ever had, and and I, I said, and he, he asked me. He said, "Can I? Would, can your son help me?" I said, "Yes." He said, "I'll pay him." I said, "Well, okay, that's fine," but I said, "Don't pay him minimum wage. Don't even pay him minimum wage. Pay him something less than that." He said, "Why?" 
I said, because I don't want him to think he's worth that much <laughs> at 14 years old. You know what I mean? I, I mean yeah, you have a good point. Well, you know, yeah. we've got to be uh, – uh, one of my mentors said this to me one time. I asked him for a raise once. Law, I'm talking – I was just a pup. And I asked him for a raise. I was audacious, audacious enough to ask him for a raise. He said, Jim, you got to understand something. We're all only worth so much to these to our company. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's some, there's a, it comes to a point when when you know you're you're not worth what you're asking for. Well, it's an interesting story. When I got out of college, Jim, I had a degree in English, which wasn't worth much since I wasn't going to teach, and I spent <laughs> time, uh, which is a problem. And I and I did some sociology and psychology. Those are the things I studied in school. I went to Miami of Ohio and Oxford. And I got out of school and looked for a job, didn't really find one. Finally, a friend of my father's offered me a job selling waxes and polishes and auto parts, which I knew absolutely nothing about. An that. English teacher going into sales. That's interesting. I mean, English oh, yeah. going into sales. Clueless. Yeah. Totally clueless. And I had never done anything like this my whole life. And the guy said, I'll pay you $100 a week. And then he said, in commission. And I said, well, okay. I needed a job. I was kind of yeah. bored. And I couldn't find anything anywhere else. So I took the job. And, and when I got my first paycheck, I got $87. Uh-huh. And i never forget, I walked into his office, and his name was Phil, very nice man. I said, Phil, this isn't going to work. And he said, what do you mean? I said, I got my check, and I said, it's $87. I said, you said you're going to pay me 100 He said, well, Gary, there's taxes and Social Security. <laughs> I said, Phil, you got to do me a favor. So I said, pay me 100 bucks so when I come home, at least I have $100 in my account. I said, I can't live on $87. <laughs> And he said, you've been here two weeks and you want to raise. I said, Phil, trust me, it'll be a good decision on your part. Just give me the 100 bucks and don't give me a hard time about this. And he looked at me and he says, unbelievable, two weeks and I'm giving you a raise. And he just <laughs> shook his head and I left. But but I turned out to be a very good salesman, yeah. and he made very good money off of me. And, you know, the, the story was that it wasn't a bad 13 bucks he invested. Do you so. see that kind of but, – but see, he paid you because you had some spunk. You had some. Right. You had a little fire in your belly. You you basically sold him like he wanted you to sell customers. Precisely. You, when you see the young people today, do you see that kind of fire? No, and, and I'm very disturbed by that. In fact, Jim, it's very interesting. I've tried to hire a protege, a protege for myself. I need someone yeah. to follow me around, mm-hmm. and I've had three different potentials. One of them, I actually thought I hired, and he no showed. Uh, we had wow. agreed on a salary. We agreed wow. on a really nice commission. And he never even came in. I never heard a word from him, not a phone call, nothing. Mm. The day he was going to start, he never showed up. And I thought, well, that was not very classy. Right. Uh, and I spent three, probably three months interviewing him, having other people I trust interview him. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just hard. No, there's, there's a lack of that. There's, when we come back, we're going to talk get Gary to, to, to share some more ideas on what he thinks is wrong. And, what, how, and he's got some ideas on how to fix this younger generation if whatever they need fixing. 20 after, I'm Jim Blasting him. Gary Sirak is our guest. His book is called If Money Talked. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience. Except as otherwise provided by copyright law, all other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved.